Hello, Magic Community on YouTube. I'm T1 Glister Elf here with a deck tech of mine that uh, I know is not going to be terribly competitive, but I love the theme of it. I have a lot of fun playing it. Uh, solidly tier 14, but I'm going to give you a, a look at it anyway. It's I say that it is actually pretty powerful. It's just not good against combo, and so as a result, you're not going to take this too many places. But with that being said. Uh, it is five color elementals. It is the most mid rangey deck that I've ever come up with. Uh, so here we go. We're going to start off with our four Flamekin Harbingers from the Harbinger cycle in Lorwyn. This is exactly, this is just go and find an elemental and tutor it up. It's, you know, Mystical Tutor, Vampiric Tutor. This is Elemental Tutor. Put it on top of your deck and draw it next turn. We have ways of getting it in our hand that turn, but for the most part, that's it. And even if it just happens to be on top of your deck, it's still a 1-1, and it's still an elemental, so there's still synergy there. You can still use it for whatnot. Uh, just a quick second. Alright, so the next card that we have, I want to show this one off, actually. Uh, not just because it's a good card, in my estimation, at least in the context of this deck, but uh, it's, quite, it's quite a misprint. So, this is a regular one. Here's my misprint. <laughs> so I'm a fan. Anyway, this is Smoke Brighter. This is our, uh, you know, double bird, I guess. Costs twice as much, but produces twice as much mana. Any color combination, but only for elementals, which, thankfully, is everything in this deck. No real downside there. On the theme of making our elementals cheaper, we've for Bright Hearth Banneret, from the Banneret cycle, of course, in Morning Tide. Uh, this just makes Elementals and Warriors one cheaper. Uh, they don't stack. Elemental Warriors are not two cheaper. There's still one. And uh, has Reinforce. I honestly don't know that I've ever actually used the Reinforce mode in a game on camera. I don't think I have. Just casually. Uh, but you just care about it making them cheaper. That's all. That's pretty much it. Alright, next, it can't be an elemental deck without Voice of Resurgence. Row, row, fight the control. Yeah, fight all the control decks. And this is how you do it. Um, sort of speaks for itself. You've seen this, you know where this goes. The fact that it happens to be an elemental is icing on the cake. And now, this is why I say it's the most mid range. This is actually, I think, more of a mid range deck than something like Jund or Absin. And here is why. This, this is our Siege Rhino. This is our bigger Siege Rhino. This is a 6-6 six, six Vigilance Trample for 4 mana. Or, if I have a Bright Hearth Banneret out on the field, it is a 5-5 five, five Vigilance Trample for 3 mana. This is kind of crazy. And I'm going to skip ahead a little bit actually in the video and go straight to the lands just so that I can show you how easy this is, because we're not playing a bunch of fetch lands and shock lands and hoping hoping that we get it. No, we have, as our, as our land base, we start out with four ancient ziggurats, one man of any color but only for creatures, aka this deck. We have, of course, because it's a tribal deck, and I happen to have these, Cavern of Souls. Once again, just name elemental and go to town. Go to town. Because it's an elemental deck, uh, we have Primal Beyond. Uh, taps for any color, but only for elemental. Well, any color is only for elementals, otherwise it's colorless, but, again, any color. And because we have all of those, we run four Reflecting Pools, which, fun story, I was playing a Legacy, I brought this to a Legacy event. <laughs> no, not this exactly, it was a different list, but it had Reflecting Pools in it. Uh, reflecting Pool Cavern of Souls, I think, were the lands that I had out. Two Reflecting Pools in a Cavern. And the opponent was playing Delver, and he wastelanded my Cavern. So now Reflecting Pool can't make any mana. That was sad. And that was how I lost. I just got waste-locked, basically. Um, so we have all of those. <laughs> uh, so as you can see, it's pretty easy to get five colors in this deck. Those aren't the only lands. Um, I might as well get to the others now. Uh, we do have the uh, Shock Suite. We have a Blood Crypt. 
we have a sacred foundry, we have a stomping ground, and we have a steam vent. Well, okay, this probably should be a steam vent. I don't own one though. Instead, we have Grove of the Burn Willows. Um, I just thought, I just recently opened an RTR pack, and it had Hallowed Fountain. And if I had gotten another blue, the other blue one, another blue one? Hallowed, let's see, Return to Ravnica. Yeah, the, it was just two, that's right. Ay, ay, ay. And then two mountains, because Path to Exile is a card, so we want to have something to do there. And two, any red fetch. Doesn't matter which ones, you know, whichever one your heart desires, but or which combination your heart desires. This leaves us with 23 lands, which, that's a pretty mid-rangey number. I'll certainly take that. It makes the deck awfully consistent, actually, especially with the, uh, the mana dorks. The mana dork and the mana dork. Alright, so moving on with more creatures, because this is an elementals deck, we get to be... This is this feels like a Timmy deck. To me, it feels like I'm just being Timmy. Uh, Mole Drifter, <laughs> Divination on a Stick. Yeah, sort of speaks for itself. Um, if you play Popper, this shows up in Trinket Control a good bit. I would like to brew this with Undying Evil and Modern, um, as soon as I get the rest of the cards for it. I actually don't own enough Watery Graves or um, Black Fetches nowadays. Uh, well, I'll talk about that more in just a moment. Uh, for Shriek Maw, this used to be one of the best cards in the deck. Now, I'm not so sure. The prevalence of, let's see, Siege Rhino, Tassiger, Gurmog, Angler, I, I name those a lot, but seriously, I mean, look at MTG Top 8, you see them all over the place. And as a result, Terror on a Stick isn't as good. It, it's not killing quite as much as we would hope. It's still necessary. You might actually get to the point, though, in certain metas especially, where Shriek Maw just, you don't need four. Too many big black creatures running around. On the other hand, those big black creatures tend to be ones that we can beat out with our giant creatures. It's like... We run one of Horde of Notions. So, my favorite play that this deck can make is turn one, uh, say, Primal Beyond, Flamekin Harbinger. Tutor up, Horde of Notions. Turn two, say, Reflecting Pool, Smoke Braider. And <laughs> turn three, Mountain, Horde of Notions. We have just successfully played a block deck in Modern. That is a turn three, five, five. I love it. I love it. Uh, anyway, this allows you with your evoke creatures, and we do have more than just these two. Uh, you can use them for their evoke cost, and then get them back and gain value. Uh, notably, Horde of Notions ability, it's my understanding, if you use it on a creature in your graveyard that is technically casting, and the opponent can therefore counter, uh, I like to make absolutely sure of that. Unfortunately, let me actually, while I'm here, let me just pull that card up while I'm doing this uh, and check its gatherer oracle text. Unfortunately, on the card itself, it says you may play target elemental card from your graveyard without paying its mana cost. And I'm pretty sure that it, it, I'm also operating under the assumption uh, that what a judge told me a while back was correct, but it was an L1 at a local FNM, and he did not check the oracle text first. So, maybe I may just be cutting quite a bit out of this video. Uh, While well, that's loading up, you know, because I like big Timmy spells, so we're going to play three Soul of the Harvest. You remember this guy? You saw some play in Standard, right? He's Primordial Sage, but instead of on cast, it's Enter the Battlefield. So, that seems like it's not as good, but holy frick, we have a 6-6 six, six Trampler now. So much Trample in this deck. So much Trample in this deck. Those aren't even. Let's do this. Oh, but then I have to move quite a bit, don't I? All these down here, whatever, you're fine. You're fine. Uh, next we have a Fulminator Mage. If anything, if Shriek Maw gets replaced by anything, it's probably more Fulminator Mages. You want to talk about a combo with Horde of Notions, this is Wasteland, 
This is Crucible of Worlds. Ta-da! Every turn. Of course, by that point, you probably already killed them because you're attacking with a 5-5 Vigilance Trample Haste. But nonetheless, you can waste lock the opponent if you just absolutely need to. Now, this deck does actually come with a combo. Sort of. It's no kill you on turn one combo or anything silly like that. Unfortunately, it's just, it's pretty slow. It can kill on turn five. That's it. Yeah, even the Oracle text, by the way, says you may play target elemental card, which is odd. A lot of times we see that replaced with like, you know, when this comes into play has become when it enters the battlefield or when it's cast. You may play. You may cast. That's interesting. Insert disclaimer here, like a, a medical style disclaimer. Uh, ask your doctor, ask your judge before playing Horde of Notions. There we go. If you experience an erection lasting four or more hours, uh, this deck is not right for you. Two incandescent soul stacks. What a. I swear, I'm not drunk, I'm just tired. <laughs> and in a really good mood. Alright. So this is our lord. It'll never be royal. I really am just in that mood right now. Wah, wah. Just everything I say should be followed with wah, wah from now on. Um, what we care about more though is its activated ability because we get to put an elemental into play with haste. It dies at the end of turn, sure, but we get to put an elemental into, uh, onto the battlefield with haste. Now, there's a number of things that we can use this for if the opponent has us, uh, you know, has a bunch of counter spells or they've dropped a blood moon then we can still get our creatures in this way. Uh, that is true. That's actually not at all what we're going to be using it for, though. We have something bigger and better in mind. Remember this stupid card? <laughs> Liege of the Tangle? Oh yeah. It's a Trample 8-8 for 8 mana. And it's a Yu-Gi-Oh card, or at least it has enough text that it ought to be a Yu-Gi-Oh card. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may choose any number of target lands you control. I love how it has to actually target the lands. Can't just be any number of lands. And put an awakening counter on each of them. Each of those lands is an 8-8 green elemental creature for as long as it has an awakening counter. So, what this means is, turn 1, whatever. Turn 2, whatever. Turn 3, incandescent soulstoke. Unfortunately, even with Smoke Braider, the soonest we're getting out Soulstoke is turn 3. Turn 4, drop in Liege, swing, make your lands, some number of them, based on what you're playing around, into 8-8s or 9-9s with our Lord out. And then turn 5, swing. Ta-da! It's slow. It's beautiful to watch happen, though. It really, really is. Uh, it is also something that people can fight with a bunch of hate cards. Like, everything that could be called a Wrath, for instance. Wrath of God, Day of Judgment, Damnation, Supreme Verdict, yada yada yada. Uh, all of those could deal with our Awakened Land, so be careful about animating all of yours. Uh, but on the other hand, Spot Removal can deal with just one. So, there's a happy medium around there somewhere. This is a, a great way to close a game out relatively quickly against decks that, if you give them too much time to set up, can be a pain. That being said, the combo is not very good. It's, it, again, it's slow. It's not exactly like a... Well, here's how I like to think of it. Splinter Twin is a tempo deck that has a combo in it. They can kill you on turn four out of nowhere. Otherwise, they're a tempo deck killing you. We're a mid-range deck that has a very... It's the, even the combo feels mid-rangey. <laughs> it really does. Um, but... If you want to replace Liege of the Tangle with anything, probably more Fulminator Rages. Uh, I only own one. I would almost certainly be running more if I had them. Absolutely. It's that good of a card. And if that's the case, you may not need as many Soul Stokes because it's no longer a combo piece. But wait, we only have three cards that are part of this combo. Two Soul Stokes and a Liege. That's it, right? Well, that's true, but Flamekin Harbinger tutors up the pieces. So it's a little bit more consistent than you might think. Um, but that being the case, yes, it is It is a slow combo, so feel free to do with that what you will. Cyborg. Um, so this is awkward. So the sideboard that 
uh, by the way, this is in the description. The sideboard, the whole deck list is in the description. The sideboard is in the description. I have a sideboard with me. I'm actually not even. It's not even really worth showing because I had to sell enough cards from it that the cards that were in those slots, um, a lot of them have been taken out. So, for example, um, I used to have a Cloud Thresher. Um, a lot of these were foil. I mean, were cheap, and so I just got foils of them. But the foils were bought because foils, I guess. No, seriously, someone watched one of my uh, one of my games with this deck and just thought it was cool. And I will be selling more of these pieces after the deck tech has been completed. Um, for example, the Voice of Resurgences, I will not have those for long. Um, the Foil, Soul of the Harvest, the prom all of my promo Shriek Maws and Mold Drifters are going to be gone. Um, I think that might be it, for, except for the, well, for the land base, that's separate, but anyway, the, the point is that we may not, I may not have many of these cards later, I'm just getting the deck tech in now, but some of the sideboard cards have already been sold. So, I'll give you the sideboard that I have, this is very budget, and uh, you do with that what you will. Uh, the ideal sideboard, again, is in the deck list, so Aether Snipe is supposed to be a Cloud Thresher, that was what was in that slot. And I'll give it this much. At least it deals with all kinds of permanents. Uh, all kinds of permanents. Um, what can I say? It sort of speaks for itself. That's what I get for looking at the computer screen over to the side. The car is just like, what are we doing? He's even looking that direction like, get me out of here. I'm not photogenic. You're under a blood moon. Hopefully this guy can get you out for a turn. I like that it enters the battlefield return. Some of these are leaves the battlefield, and so you're, you know, you're heavily supposed to uh, evoke them instead. Not, not a big fan. That being said, it's six mana for a four four that just bounces something. It's not all that great. But there you have it. This one actually is supposed to be in the deck. It's a deep fire elemental. We bring this in against control. It's a six mana four four, so not so good on that front. Uh, destroy target artifact or creature with converted mana cost X. Well, why do we care? Well, for example, uh, Celestial Colonnade is a zero mana creature, basically. Uh, same thing with Mutavault, same thing with Creeping Tar Pit. If it's a control deck creature, oftentimes it's a land, and we can bring this in to destroy those. Alternatively, in a game that we have uh, against an Ensnaring Bridge deck, this can destroy Ensnaring Bridge. Uh, it's actually one of the few ways that we have to do that. Uh, it's repeatable destruction. If you get into a stalled board state, this guy can hopefully get you out. I have a one of Flamekin Zealot, which was not in the original list, but almost made the cut. Uh, by the way, I, I should note that there are a lot of one ofs in the sideboard here, because Flamekin Harbinger lets me tutor them up, so why not? Uh, this one is just for that extra push. If your deck just needs to win more quickly, Flamekin Zealot can get the job done. Um, that's pretty much it. It's almost even main boardable. Maybe it's worth it. I'm not sure. But for right now, anyway, I, I have him in the sideboard. It's Maybe it goes in if you take the combo out and you just want to speed the deck up. This may enable turn 4 kills. I haven't actually uh, tested that out yet, but you might be able to pull out some turn 4 kills with Flamekin Zealot. I wouldn't be surprised. Another Horde of Notions. Uh, well, this one was not in the original list either. It's You bring this in against other mid-range decks, other control or uh, control decks, just something else to sort of go over the top of the opponents. And because it can recur the creatures, even if they have spot removal uh, or counter spells, this can help to deal with that by getting them back. Ta-da! Four ingot chewer chewers in the original list, two now, the other two were foils, and they've been sold already. Uh, you see this card hanging out in Vintage. I love Vintage. You have all these super powerful cards, and Ingot Chewer and Slash Panther see play. Have you seen Slash Panther? It's a 4-2 haste. That's it. <laughs> vintage. Uh, speaks for itself. Bring it in against Affinity. Bring it in against Lantern. Um, maybe there's something else out there, but that's... That's it so far. This is the only, in the original list anyway, 
Uh, this is the only four of in the sideboard, and only one of two that isn't a one of. Uh, having artifact removal is just that important because affinity is that ubiquitous pretty much wherever you go on the competitive scene. Meadowboon was one of those ingot chewers. Meadowboon is terrible. <laughs> I don't know why I have you other than that I needed another slot. Maybe this should be spell sky. Honestly, it's that bad. When it leaves the battlefield, put a plus one plus one counter on each creature target player controls. Okay, um, yay? If I already have a swarm out, then I can kill my own dude buddy? For four mana to give plus one plus one? No, no, that's pretty bad. I admit. I admit, he's just there for now, though. Uh, Nova Chaser is awesome. This is like the Captain Falcon of my deck. I love this guy. He didn't make the cut in the original list. He's another ingot chewer. But look at that, a 10-2 trample. Look at that! Are you not entertained? Uh, Champion and Elemental is actually really important in this deck because a lot of ours have Enter the Battlefield abilities, and Nova Chaser, when it dies, brings them back and triggers those abilities. Usually I'm doing this to a Mole Drifter or a Flamekin Harbinger. Uh, Flamekin, so I tutor something else up, of course, and it's a 1 1. What are you going to do with it at that point? And Mole Drifter is pretty weak. It's a 2-2 flyer, but we care more about its ability rather than its prowess in battle, I guess. It trades with Delver. That's always fun. Divination trading with Delver is good. But, you know, getting two more cards after a 10-2 dies, yeah, we'll take that, assuming we haven't already won off the 10-2. Um, I actually would not be surprised if Nova Chaser enables some turn 4 kills in this deck. Turn 1, whatever, turn 2, Smoke Braider, turn 3, Nova Chaser. Hopefully on the turn 1, Flamekin Harbinger. Now, on the other hand, though, that's 10 damage on turn 4, because it doesn't have haste, and then we need to find 10 damage elsewhere. Eh, maybe it's not turn 4. Okay, this deck is slow. Like I said, it's the most mid-rangey mid-range deck. Smog Elemental. Fight tokens every day. Uh, that's pretty much it. It's... Creatures with flying, your opponent's control, get minus one, minus one. Okay, so this this card, if you ever did a gate crash draft, aka Boros draft, uh, Smog Elemental. All day, every day, right? Um, that's, well, it's only a 3-3, three, three, though. 3-3 three, three for six and limited is, even as a flyer, that's not good. Um, but, hey, I mean, it fights Lingering Souls, it fights Spectral Processions, it fights everything that the token deck is doing, Sands, uh, Raise the Alarm, and maybe Hero Blade Hold or whatnot. And just flyers in general. Look out, Delver, here we come. No, I don't, I don't side that in against Delver. <laughs> so, another Soul of the Harvest. For other mid-range matches, I side this in against Absin and Jund. Um, if they're removing my creatures continuously, this helps me to reload my hand. And also, it's bigger than everything else they're doing. I mean, let's see, a Tarmogoyf gets up to, what, a 5-6 in those decks? It is land, instant sorcery, creature, planeswalker for Liliana. Maybe artifact? I'm trying to think. I think it only gets to a 5-6 in most uh, Tarmogoyf lists, most Jund and Absent lists. Uh, nope, soul, soul's bigger. <laughs> Mine is bigger than yours. Another removal spell, Spite Bellows. When it leaves play, it deals 6 damage to target creature. Now, that kills everything in this format. That kills Worm Coil Engine, that kills Primeval Titan, that kills everything in this format. Oh, modern. Uh, unfortunately, you do have to evoke it, but... That means you get it back with a uh, horde of notions. Unfortunately, though, when you get it back, you don't get the six damage until it dies again. Uh, that one was actually also in the original list. It seems silly. It seems pretty bad, but there are some things that sh spite that shriek maw can kill. For everything else, there's spite bellows. Wow. <laughs> Stigma lasher. For Soul Sisters and any deck that's doing gratuitous amounts of life gain. If I see Feed the Clan, uh, maybe this card is worth it. I mean, it is a 2-2 Wither as well, so if I guess incorrectly and they're not using a lot of life gain, uh, it's still 
you know, a 2-2 for 2 that makes their creatures weaker. I'll take that. That's fine. And if it ever connects, it cuts off a potential source of value later on. Sulfur Elemental. Another anti-Soul Sisters, anti-token card. Although, beware this against actually both of those decks, because once they get a single uh, Anthem out, Intangible Virtue, Honor of the Pure, suddenly their creatures are, you know... It does say get plus one, minus one. Their creatures are bigger, so do watch out for that. Uh, but it does have Flash, it does have Split Second, and, I mean, the Split Second usually doesn't matter against the decks we're citing this in against, but the Flash. Oh, the Flash. Um, yeah, just catch them off guard. Easy enough. Also in the original. And then uh, two Wismares. It's one in the original sideboard, uh, two here. I think there was a uh, Fault Grinder, the Foil Fault Grinder, in place of this one. I use this to fight Blood Moon and other problematic enchantments. Uh, you can do a surprisingly good job, for a five-color deck at least, of fighting through Blood Moon, thanks to Smoke Braider and Incandescent Soulstuck, and Har uh, Herbinger's ability to get either of those. With Smoke Braider, the only creature that you can't cast in your deck with a single Smoke Braider is Horde of Notions, and it's only one. Everything else has uh, two or fewer non-red mana symbols in its cost, so you can do that. Uh, but even so, you may want to have an answer to it, and so Wismare can come in. Um, on the other hand, and I'm going to readily admit this, because it doesn't have flash, there's not much that you can do um, on that turn. You have to have Smoke Braider to cast the Wismare anyway, or you can flash it in with uh, Soulstoke. So, not all that great. Uh, options, you could try running your two fetches as uh, Arid Mesas and have a basic planes in here too. An issue with that though is that you don't cast, you don't use the planes for anything except Horde and Voice. I mean, and you, dude buddy. Dude buddy. Um, you also, if you aren't running red, then you run the risk of not being able to cast the turn one Harbinger. Although, you're probably not keeping a hand with one land anyway. Um, so maybe that's worth it. Maybe one mountain, one plains, and then everything else stays the same. And you could use that plains for the Wismare. Ta-da! Uh, some other suggestions. I recommend Ophel Snout. All that you care about is that it's a flash elemental. It costs black and two, but the evoke cost is just black. Just straight up black. And you exile a card from their graveyard. I use that to fight uh, Grishol brand or Goryeo's Vengeance decks in general, um, anything that relies on the graveyard like that, I can respond to a Snapcaster trigger um, and by taking away the card that would have flashed back. If, if I'm really desperate trying to hit someone's delve, I might do something like that. Uh, I might just, but it only gets rid of one card. I don't know. Usually you bring this in against the Reanimator combo decks or anything that needs something in its graveyard to work. Um, I already mentioned Cloud Thresher, uh, a second Fulminator Mage. As many, I, I wouldn't say as many Fulminator Mages. Uh, Fulminator Mage is good. You can get a lot out of that card. It definitely works in the main board. It definitely, definitely works in the sideboard. You bring it in against uh, other mid-range decks. You bring it in against the control decks. You bring it in against decks like uh, Living End, I would even suggest that don't have many lands to begin with and you can lock them out of the game by hitting their lands um, and of course in the case of living end you can also get it back and have you know when they living end you have something else to do you know their trick you can turn it against them doesn't do much when you're facing down you know uh, pale recluse and stuff like that jungle weaver but it's something you can do um, more importantly you can waste lock with horde of notions and uh, acting as the Crucible of Worlds for the deck. Uh, let's see, uh, some other recommendations of mine. Uh, Fault Grinder, if you can't afford another Fulminator Mage, I know it's coming off its reprint in Modern Masters 2, um, and it's, it's the one that you'd prefer. Fault Grinder is certainly a budget alternative. It's 5 mana, destroy target land. Well, the Evoke is 5 mana. Uh, the actual casting of it normally is even more than that. Ugh. That's a bit of a trick, but it hits uh, non-base. It hits basic lands as well, so that is something that you could try. Absolutely. 
Um, I'm racking my brain to see if there's anything else that I can think of. Any other elementals that might just make the cut in this. Uh, but go on to gather, perhaps. Type in elemental for the creature, for the subtype. And just go to town. Oh, and make sure that its format's modern. And just go to town. There are lots of great elementals. Just absolutely beautiful elementals. Um, elementals to me seem kind of like the way that humans had been treated until Innistrad, which is there's a bunch of really good ones, but they weren't made to be quite as synergistic with one another, like elves and merfolk and goblins and so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, there's there's quite a bit actually. There's there's some support, all right. And Woodland Wanderer. I could have talked a lot about Woodland Wonder. It does work, <laughs> to be sure. I love beating Siege Rhino for three mana potentially, and you're still ahead of Siege Rhino. I love beating Gurmog Angler. I love trading with Primeval Titan and Worm Coil Engine. You know, I, I love Woodland Wonder. It is a great card. So much trample in this deck. So much trample in this deck. Uh, and it has a lot of utility. That being said, the deck is also kind of mindless. You don't need to be, you know, Patrick Chape. You don't need to be Matthias Hunt. You don't need to be a savant of any sort in order to play this deck. It really just plays itself. I mean, there is some thinking. I, it's not... I'm, I'm putting it down, admittedly. Uh, there is some thinking about tutoring. You know, what are you going to get? Having answers for everything. Uh, sometimes, like, I've missequenced my spells. You do be careful about the way that you tap your lands, because Horde of Notions, all of your lands will work for Horde's casting costs, not all of them work for its ability. Uh, Ancient Ziggurat and Cavern of Souls, I'm looking at you. Um, you know, do you, when do you go for the combo, or is the combo even going to be in your deck? But if it is going to be in your deck, when do you go for the combo, when do you go for certain value creatures? Um, yeah, there's a... <laughs> there's a lot here. Um, it's not it's not a puzzle you have to put together. I, I guess that's how I should better describe it. But that's just hey, that's just my opinion, man. Alright. And that's it for now. Uh thank you, Magic Community on YouTube, for watching this. If you have any suggestions, any critiques, uh please leave them in the comments. And I look forward to reading those and seeing what I can do. Now that being said, Again, if you're looking for more games from the, out of this deck, uh, because I'm having to sell a fair number of cards from it, I hate to say it, but unless I'm throwing proxies in, I'm not going to be able to play it. And of course you can't run proxies in a sanctioned event, so I may be able to get, to get back to this deck at some point when money's not an issue as much, but for right now, here we are. Alright, well I'll see you later. Bye bye. So one quick thing that I should mention before I leave you. Uh, on a meta level, when do you play this deck? This deck is actually... I, I, I criticize it as being tier, what I say, 14, something like that. It's actually not bad at all. Well, what I mean by that is this. Uh, I might actually play this at a competitive event beyond FNM if I had a meta read. It's the most mid-rangey mid-range deck. It can do quite a number on uh, on Jund, on Abzin, on um, Rock. I don't know. Do, you, do we even see Rock that much anymore? The point is that it's a it's a very strong mid-range deck because once you it can make it to the late game against the mid-range decks obviously and when it does mine are bigger than yours. Mine is bigger than yours. Mine is and so on and so forth. It's also very strong against the control decks. Uh, Cavern of Souls is a four of in here. Voice of Resurgence, the control decks hate to see, hate to see. Uh, you can still cast your spells even through counter magic uh, with Incandescent Soulstoke. Um, and the combo, it kills on turn 5, which isn't very soon, unless you're playing against a control deck, uh, which often tries to stall the game until it, later than even that. Um, so this deck actually has a fairly strong, I would say its control match is stronger than maybe any other deck that I've played up to this point. Um, I've beaten uh, Jeskai Flash with it, I've beaten uh, a Junk Control deck with it before. I had so many Wraths. 
Uh, you can drown them in card advantage with cards like Soul of the Harvest and Mole Drifter. Um, but, oh, and Fulminator Mage. Fulminator Mage! You can waste lock. I didn't do it on camera, unfortunately. I wish I could. I wish I had, but um, I waste locked a control deck. It was a Jeskai Flash deck. Um, that was fun for me. Um, <laughs> that being said, where this deck falters, um, it, it has an okay match against a lot of aggro decks. If they give you a few turns, then you can do it. Infect is not one you want to play against, perhaps for obvious reasons. Uh, they're just too fast. Burn? Mm, probably not. I think Burn's favored. Some, I, if I, and I'm just making this up off the top of my head, but maybe 60-40 in Burn's favor. Um, that being said, you can still you can still play against aggro decks for the most part. Combo, no. This deck is definitely not made for combo. We have zero of all of the following: uh, hand attack spells like Thoughtseize, Inquisition of Kozilek, Duress. Uh, we have zero counter spells. We have zero ways to kill on turn four or sooner. So this game, this deck rather, is made to make it to the late game, the mid game and the late game, and kill from there. If you cannot make it to that point, then you probably aren't winning. The way that you beat combo decks is you rely on their inconsistency. <laughs> and that's about it. Now, you could say, but wait a minute, don't you put in some sideboard cards for them? Well, no. Unfortunately, there aren't any really good elementals for what I would need for this, which is, say, hand attack or counter spells. Um, the only elementals I can think of off the top of my head that are in modern that do that are, let's see, there's the Mind Rot Elemental, which is also way overcosted. It's too expensive to get out anyway. Hmm. I can't even think of any counterspell elementals off the top of my head. Uh, so there are some other ways that you can go about doing this. Oh, here's a here's an interesting suggestion, uh, especially if you decide to take out the combo. I would actually very strongly recommend this if you take out the combo. Mirror Entity. That is quite the card. Now, you can't use Ancient Ziggurat on it, but all of your other lands can be just dumped into Mirror Entity, and you can turn your dude buddy, your little dude buddies over here, into big dude buddies. Uh, now. It will make your Horde of Notions and Soul of the Harvest smaller in all likelihood. But, bear in mind that Woodland Wanderer has counters actually put onto him. And those counters go over and above the new base power toughness that you give off of Mirror Entity. Ha <laughs> ha! What can I say? That's, that's pretty sweet, right? When suddenly Mirror Entity gets 4 mana, everything's a 4-4, except your Woodland Wanderer is now an 8-8 Vigilist Trample. Uh, so Mirror Entity is a card you could probably consider. Uh, should probably consider, I would say. Uh, hmm. I'm trying to think of any other changelings. Like, is it Shape Sharer? Is that the one? Uh, uh. Uh, you can't use Ancient Ziggurat, you can't use Cavern, you can't use most of these. I don't have a Steam Vents, so you can't actually fetch blue out, but if you if you had a Steam Vents, you could. Uh, to use its ability. I mean, it sounds cute and everything. I'm gonna copy your Iona or something silly like that. Um, yeah, that's that's maybe not all that great. Maybe in the sideboard. I, I guess I wouldn't doubt it going in the sideboard. I have run Shape Share in the sideboard before. Sideboard, sideboard. Alright, and that's really about it for right now. Again, any suggestions? Any more? If you see a changeling that you think ought to go in here, <laughs> let me know. Uh, and maybe if we get a return to Lorwyn, because we're getting a return every now and then, uh, maybe we'll get more changelings to add in. Thank you very much, YouTube, and Magic Community on YouTube. I will see you later. Take care. Bye-bye.